Okay, so today we will talk about electricity, electronics, and uh, semiconductors. So So we will begin with what uh, with voltage current and resistance we will try to remember what these are in short and uh, let's begin with voltage and as we know every electric charge we have plus here uh, it creates electric field this electric field propagates in all the directions from the charge so we can draw straight lines like this and it also propagates here so basically everywhere this is just schematic representation the slot of we can draw lines in between here so this is electric charge that we mark with capital Q uh, now these lines represent uh, the direction uh, at which small positive charge let's see who small is pushed away from the from this big electric charge so it's pushed if you if it is position here is pushed here if it's position here so then it is pushed pushed here so then we would have another one here we would have another one and here we have another one if it's here then it would go here in this direction then we would have another one why then all other lines are added according to to this so here it, these lines represent the direction at which small positive charge goes if we have a minus sign then we have a arrows in this direction because here because minus attracts small positive charge everything is, ba is, is uh, based on regards of small positive charge so so uh, if we have two parallel plates parallel electric plates plus and minus so the electric field goes from plus to minus and here the field is homogeneous it means that the electric the strength of electric field is everywhere it is the same here 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 uh, the field strength is uh, defined by the density of these lines as if we see here the density is the same here the density is the same and here the density is the same but here we can see that we have more lines here in this region if we took this imaginary square we have one one line here two three maybe three four lines here and if we put it the same the same square here we have only one line so it means that here the ch the electric field is strong so it's understandable that closer to electric uh, charge the field is stronger 
and uh, as we go further the electric field becomes is weaker so if we put small positive electric charge here in this homogeneous electric field it goes in this direction so this electric charge it has uh, the it has the strength of electric field here so it's denoted by E as a vector so voltage that we can abbreviate by V or by U here because it would be easier so the voltage V or U it is defined as E times delta D delta D is the distance between these plates It is basically the distance which is traveled by this uh, small electric charge. So the distance that electric charge travels in the field. Okay, so then this E can be written as D2 minus D1. And we can write E D2 minus E D1 and this this is called we can write phi 2 which represents this and uh, phi 1 it represents this so here we can write that voltage is the difference in electric potentials so potential is potential phi is E times D electric field times the distance and uh, and uh, voltage is voltage is considered to be a potential difference so what does it mean? So it means that voltage is voltage see here voltage it is potential difference. So voltage is potential energy that unit electric charge gets or attains or obtains positioned in that's right extrinsic so it means that extrinsic electric field so it means that it is electric field created by the bigger charge yes not discharge but bigger charge extrinsic electric field so uh, voltage has the units of volts and uh, volts we can write that this, these are joules per coulomb so it is the energy that attains unit electric charge the units of electric charge are coulombs so this is represents the energy for unit electric charge so this representation Juice by Coulomb could tell you what what it is. It is that it is energy for uh, the amount of energy that 
one coulomb of charge attains position in electric field so that's why voltage is referred to potential energy now current so current is can be calculated as dq divided by dt so this is dq is the charge the amount of charge that passes basically through the wire to the particular surface area of the wire during particular time so it is dq by dt and this this tells you that uh, units of current can be expressed like coulombs per second and these are equal to amperes or amps so similarly as we, we had here expression to know what the volts were here we have the expression to know what the amperes are now resistance it is usually written in the formula like this this is rho ls and this this is the length of the wire this is the surface area of the wire this is the specific resistance of the material that the wire is made of so so the units of of the resistance are ohms written like this with, with omega and uh, we can also have a equation for P it is U times I so it is the equation for power so P is power and uh, it is voltage times current now now this uh, the units are joules per second or uh, watts so this is power and also we can write that work A A represents here electric work this is power this is work it is represented as P times T and it is represented as U times I times T so better representation would be like the units of of work are joules so these are equal to power units are joules per second 
times sec seconds. So we can uh, we can cancel seconds and we will obtain joules. Here we have joules per coulomb. Also we have coulombs per second and we also have seconds. So these units also cancel each other out and we get only joules. So it means that it is work done. So voltage U represents the energy of the unit charge. So if we know the energy of the unit charge, we multiply by what? We multiply by current that is uh, amount of charge per unit time. And we also have to multiply by seconds by t. t is the time to know the total charge. So here it is t to know the total charge. If we know the total charge and we know the energy for charge, then we multiply and we get everything. And we get work in joules. So this seems seems reasonable to know the units. Okay. Now let's go back to, not back, but move forward with, uh, we have a thing called Ohm's Law. Ohm's Law, and Ohm's Law is written like U, I, current is voltage divided by resistance. Now, from this formula we can create formula U is I times R. R is U divided by I. And now this is called voltage drop. This is called Ohm's law. This is called voltage drop. This is derived from Ohm's law. This is just how to calculate resistance not that important. So now can we say that on, on, on Ohm's law now, can we say that I is dependent on U and R? Yes we can because because we'll answer later. Can we say that here U is dependent on I and R? No, we can, cannot. Now, can we say that R? is dependent on U and I. No, we cannot say that. Why? Here it is why. This is something with, uh, with mathematics, with equations, understanding equations. Uh, what Speaking about the first speaking about the first it is correct. Now why these are two wrong? So then then by answering these we will answer why this is correct. So if we have this one resistance is the property of the material, property of the wire. And here it's property only on the wire. The length 
surface area and this is characteristics of the material of the wire so resistance cannot be cannot be dependent on voltage and current because the wire has the resistance even though there is no voltage applied there is no electric field no battery and no current current flowing now voltage is voltage dependent on current and and, and uh, resistance no because voltage is what voltage is electric field so if we don't have uh, so electric field can be in the in the surroundings with no with no current flowing yeah now this one this one is correct because uh, here we have the resistance and on the resistance between the resistance there is a voltage supply there is voltage supply put on the resistance and uh, there is electric field inside it and then the current flows so this is this is correct so but these two aren't only these two if we have the electric circuit simply electric circuit, we can use this to calculate resistance and voltages but it doesn't mean that they are we can cannot clear out the dependencies here so that's what I wanted to tell you and this tells you that the highest voltage drop U is on the highest resistance so imagine you have a resistor here connected to the voltage supply plus minus so here we have plus sign here we have minus sign from plus to minus the electrons flow to this to this side and uh, it tells you basically that u is i times r so all the voltage drops here if we have pi volts here we say that the resistance of the wire is neglected negligible so all five volts are here on this resistor so what it means basically that u was e times delta d so it means that basically do within this delta d distance electric field develops and that electric field is concentrated on that resistance okay now so these are some kind of philosophic things that you may not have read in the books other stuff other stuff goes with uh, circuits circuits now uh, what this is uh, this is the you you already know this is uh, voltage supply this this would represent a little bit higher voltage supply anyways voltage supply made of these two uh, this is a resistor this voltage supply higher of higher voltage this represents light bulb this would represent capacitor and this would represent diode the main the main components there are circuit connection there is connection in in series in series we may connect what resistors we may connect voltage supplies we may connect capacitors diodes we can connect light bulbs it's similar to resistors in series or in parallel but i'm not going to go in deeper with this because it is you can find it anywhere and, and you probably learned it in, at school 
I will go maybe to some uh, things that you may, may have not learned deeper or maybe you did, didn't could not, could not associate some things to other and uh, let's go with Ohm's law and the resistor so uh, we have a circuit here it is R here it is minus here it is plus so we have a circuit here and we have volt ampere characteristics of a that we did during lab works of a resistor so here we here it is voltage here it is current now what is the curve the curve of the resistor it is usually straight line for for a resistor this is volt ampere characteristics or VACH for resistor is a straight line straight line what is the equation of straight line the equation of straight line if you remember from school was this was this was y this was x this was straight line this was alpha the angle so y was kx what was k k was tangent alpha so it represented so k represents the angle of the straight line here it is similar we have Ohm's law so it is I U divided by R so here we have also the angle and here it is what it is 1 divided by R times U so in this case you see we have I 1 divided by R times U so similar to this Y is KX so here it is Y this is K this is X so in this case 1 divided by R is can be written as G G means conductivity conductivity and we can write simply I is G times U where it is y k x and and uh, g is 1 divided by r and it is tangent alpha tangent alpha here so this is the mathematics and similarities with with uh, the equation of a straight line Here we can write it is GU. So and this this all holds for here. Now what else? So Ohm's law is the equation of a straight line. So resistor VACH back back is a straight line for a resistor. Now what else? Now if we had we had a, a light bulb, we had a light bulb. It's considered a simple element also. So light bulb has some kind of this resistor. Also, it can go this can go to this uh, can go here but it is straight yeah 
the resistor has also a neg negative voltage if we have negative voltages here here we obtain uh, here we see that for a light bulb light bulb here so it means that the circuit is the circuit is what the circuit is here it is light bulb and here it is the voltage supply so for a light bulb we can see that it is the ACH is symmetrical and also it is what? It is uh, bidirectional conductivity for electric current. So it means that light bulb allows the current to pass to both both directions. So here we have minus voltage, let's say minus 3 volts, here we have plus 3 volts. Here we have uh, plus, let's say 50 amperes or milliamperes we had in the lab. Here we have minus 50. And uh, why this happens here it bends the straight line bends in the resistor it doesn't bend in the light bulb it bends so it, in the light bulb it, it bends because the light bulb has a filament a wire and uh, as the filament heats so it can be drawn like this and then we we have this filament here this filament here it has it is a wire and uh, it should be a light bulb it should be a light bulb here and this is the filament and it heats up produces light and when it gets hotter the resistance increases and so the current saturates so basically this this happens because the resistance of the wire is dependent on temperature because as you put the voltage higher voltage it increases the current and then u times i is power and as and more power means times time and it is work and more work it means more energy and more increase in temperature and therefore resistance increases and we get less current here the current is not increasing it stabilizes here here at, at very high at very high voltages and currents it might it, it may increase yeah it may may saturate after increasing the same as with light bulb but usually in the reasonable uh, voltages and currents uh, the volt ampere characteristic of a resistor are considered to be a straight line but in the voltages close to uh, resistor breakdown uh, it, this this may happen here, but this is extra case. Now, according to no, some problems here, according to uh, according to. the values of specific resistance or resistance in general 
the materials are categorized. So they are categorized to conductors as a synonym it's used it's called metals metals are all metals are good conductors second second it is insulators called dielectrics third one is semiconductors Semiconductors, these, ha these have raw low. These have raw high. These have raw intermediate. They have intermediate raw, and all of these you may have may get some questions in uh, quizzes where they ask whether semiconductors uh, pass the current uh, through both sides or, or to one side so semiconductors they pass current to both sides they have only intermediate resistances but they pass current to both sides so it is for, for uh, materials they pass all these materials they pass the electric current to both sides insulators they probably don't pass the, the, the current but they pass uh, very small current to both sides so semiconductors pass current to both sides but the resistance is intermediate 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 compared to metals and the electrics okay now electric so materials all the materials bidirectional bidirectional current flow now electric devices may have unidirectional current flow electric devices so these are not materials but devices like a diode yeah diode these may have but some of them not all because a light bulb passes has bidirection current flow. Okay. So semiconductors are usually semiconductors have uh, intermediate resistances, so they are not so important as metals but their uh, conductivity may be increased by adding uh, pure semiconductors they have pra practically intermediate uh, conductivity so pure so but their conductivity can be increased by adding some uh, other substances so the most common semiconductor is silicon s e silicon so this semiconductor it uh, it has uh, four electrons it has four electrons in, in the outer layer so basically it can be shown like uh, like this it can make four chemical bonds so when we can see we can uh, supply the silicon crystal 
silicon crystal with arsenic AS so this has four electrons in the outer layer arsenic has three so silicon with four arsenic with three what happens? It happens that if we have one atom of AS and we have a silicon here, silicon here, silicon here then the structure is, it looks like this silicon makes chemical bonds chemical bonds four chemical bonds each silicon makes creates four chemical bonds can create four chemical bonds so okay here each sil silicon can create four chemical bonds okay so arsenium also can create chemical bonds it has three electrons here so here it is it has one electron here one electron here one electron here and here one electron is missing sorry arsenium has five it has five electrons mistaken it has five electrons so here it is electron also it is electron also so each case we see paired electrons here are electron pairs pairs here electron pair here electron here electron here with with other silicon atoms here it is electron here here and here 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 and here so everything is paired here but but arsenium has five outer layer electrons so one electron here we with, from arsenium we have one electron two three four so it means that one electron is here free so it can make one bond or it can can travel somewhere it can go somewhere so it means it can move in the electric field so this type of semiconductor that is not pure uh, it, it is it is uh, not pure semiconductor it is called uh, it has the conductivity that main electric charge carriers are, are electrons so it has electronic conductivity semiconductor it is it is called also n type n type semiconductor because the charge of electron is negative negative means n or n semiconductor simply just n semiconductor or n semiconductor this is because the charge of electron is negative and the main char and the main charge carriers are electrons so n semiconductor now different 
counter example is if we add a if we have silicon and we have indium here so silicon here makes four covalent bonds silicon here makes four covalent bonds indium has what indium so here it is here these are the more important electrons electrons here electrons here electron here electron here electron here so indium is has three outer layer electrons so it can it has one electron here one electron here and one electron here so here it is missing missing one electron so what does it mean it means that one electron from somewhere can come here into the space to make a bond and uh, this is called hole and this semiconductor is called hole conductivity semiconductor or it is called uh, and uh, P, P type semiconductor or P semiconductor P semiconductor why P? P represents positive because if we have if we have missing electrons so then it means that we have uh, we have a place for the electron and uh, the balance electron or a, or a place for it it can be can be abbreviated as as a plus or positive okay place for an electron is marked as positive as positive charge or plus so it means that this can accept electrons okay now what uh, so in uh, in this type of semiconductor and type of semiconductor primary elect primary charge carriers are electrons primary are electrons secondary are holes in this type of semiconductor p semiconductor primary are holes secondary are electrons what else i would like to tell you So now let's go to the to P N junction. P N junction. It it is diode. P N junction. So it means that P semiconductor and N semiconductor are connected together. So it, it looks like this pn and the symbol of diode is this so uh, so 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 what so uh, this is how diode is connected in electric circle this part P has to be with positive this has to be with negative then the di diode is in our case it was emitting light like emitting light and it was working 
So if it is connected like this, it is not working and the diode is called reverse biased. So now let's uh, finalize with this with, with the diodes and we can draw like here P N and here we can draw a circuit here we will make it reverse bias here we, we will make it in this part we will make it forward biased and uh, this is reverse biasing meaning that P is with minus N is with plus so when this, this is connected like this basically the resistance of PN junction is high and uh, when P has a lot of pluses or holes equivalently the charge uh, movement can be represented by the movement of, uh, of holes as the place for electrons so it is relative so here it is it has a lot of electrons or minuses so pluses are go they don't go through through this junction don't go through this through this gap don't go here because pluses are attracted to this part minuses are attracted to this part so nothing goes to this junction and the resistance is high and no current here. So if we have VACH of a diode, here we have U volts, here we have I amps. So we see that nothing passes when we have negative voltages. So this is reverse piercing. This part is reverse biasing. So this corresponds to this. Here something happens. Why something happens here? Because here we have pluses, holes. Here we have minuses. And minuses go from here to here. All of them go here pluses from here they go here so the charge goes through pn junction pluses go here because they are attracted by this minus minuses that were here go to this plus because they are attracted by this plus so here the resistance becomes low and we we have the current so this is forward biasing Diode is on. Diode on, diode, diode off. So here is here is what we had. So this is asymmetrical VACH and uh, unidirectional conductivity conductivity for electric current okay so these are basically simple things simple things these are very simple very simple uh, circuits that we used in the lab works in the first lab work uh, next lecture we will we will talk about transistors there will be a, a more complex thing so we will have the next lecture and uh, one more lecture we will have about questions and a few uh, exercises Okay, so this, this is 
it for now. <laughs>